Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Cover, I am Penge, and welcome back to RimWorld, where we continue the tale of our ten colonists and their great big load of animals. We're not going to go into the specifics of the animals, there's just too many animals to get through. But rest assured, we have many, many animals in our little settlement, and last time out, we had a couple of issues to deal with. So, the first thing that came along was that there were some angry polar bears, and they wanted to come and eat us. Now, we were helped a little bit with the polar bears by the fact that there were some passing traders or something like that or I don't know just some visitors coming by and they came by and the polar bears because they couldn't get to us they thought hey do you know what I'm not picky let's eat those people instead so they attacked some random passers-by which was quite helpful for us because that weakened some and then eventually we were able to get rid of the polar bears I mean yeah we did have to creep out we crept out and took them on there was one lurking around over here that we didn't particularly like but we dealt with the polar bears they have presumably been turned into one of these I don't know chops over here somewhere so that's nice, you know, we've got plenty of food from the polar bears. And then the second issue we had to deal with was up here. And this was where some people came in and they were going to attack us. They were going to uh, siege us with mortars and little sort of missile things. They were going to fire at us. And that wasn't very nice. So we crept out here out of this door. We took a shot at them with uh, with Cunic on her fancy new legs. And we took a shot. They stopped building all this stuff. And then they kind of got distracted by the fact that we were firing at them. And then they started coming around here. And eventually, although I didn't particularly help matters apparently, but eventually they came through the trap corridor and they died. Not everybody died died. I think three of them got away. I think it was three, but uh, we got quite a lot of them. A lot of them fell in the trap corridor. We were able to pick off some more as they tried to flee the area. So that was pretty good. And then everything else has been ticking over quite nicely. We've actually got ourselves a nice supply of food. We've got ourselves an okay supply of kibble. I would like it if we had some more kibble. We are missing the sort of the vegetable element to that, but we'll get that sorted soon because we've got the hydroponics room up here where we are making lots and lots of rice and such like. So, um, so yeah, it's all looking pretty good. And we do have a combat supplier. So a place, uh, so a trader is coming by called Ali Lubricants. I mean, okay, fine. Uh, they're a combat supplier. So I think we might need to go and have a little word with them. So let's have a look here. So now what we want to do is we want to move their, this beacon. We want to move this beacon up here and get in touch with them. Because if they're a combat supplier, they are likely to want to buy lots of weapons and things. So how about we move this, so reinstall it, say, just there is pretty spot on for now. So if we get somebody to do that, that would be very, very helpful. So let's see if we can get that shifted around a bit. And uh, already it's done. Marvellous. So now we need somebody to come down here. Nobody's got an inspiration. Nobody has an inspiration, which is unfortunate. So we'll get somebody to come down here and um, and use this. And then they can communicate with them and we'll see if we can sell some stuff. And I don't know what they're going to be interested in buying, but we'll move the um, we'll move the beacon around and see if we can sell some stuff. Um, there's also a few bits and bobs to sort out. Of course there is. So going through the comments, there's a few little things that we need to, uh, that we need to look at. Um, we are going to try and get rid of some of the rubbishy clothing we've got. But we'll do that after we've dealt with this trader, because the trader might buy some of that. I have no idea. It'd be very useful if they did, because then we'd make money off it, which is marvellous. But um, yeah, I don't know. So we'll do that later. But there's some other bits and bobs that we need to do as well. So um, the first thing we need to do, we need to go up here. Now, I was a bit confused last time because a bit of our devil strand died. It died, uh, it's just said it withered away, it rotted away. And um, that's because it's not within the range of our growing zone. It's not in the range of the lamp, sorry, there we go. So it's in the growing zone, but it's not within the range of the actual sun lamp. So it's not getting enough light, so it's just dying. So yeah, that's the, I just obviously miscalculated that and I've put that in incorrectly. So how about we go into here, we adjust the growing zone. So let's shrink the zone, so just get rid of that square. Yay, and then that thing can that thing could just rot away. That will just die. And that is absolutely fine. I'm not too bothered about that. So that will just go away. That sorts that out. Because that will just keep growing and then keep rotting and then keep growing and keep rotting. So we'll leave that like that. So that's absolutely fine. So now that's sorted that out. Um, we do need to finish the hydro room. <laughs> There's people on the in the comments saying, come on, you've had this on the go for ages. Finish the hydro room. And when we can't finish it, uh, finish it in its entirety, because we don't have enough steel. However, I will add another one of the bays in. There we go. So we only need two more bays to finish that off. So that's quite lovely. So yeah, we'll we'll um, we'll sort that. Um, another thing that we need to look at is when we were working on the um the stone cutter table. 
um, we set there to be a range. So make any stone blocks. But what we found was people were wandering off to over right into the middle of nowhere to pick up a block and bring it back. And I didn't realize that this had a certain range to it. So apparently what we can do is if I zoom out and do this, we can see the range at which they're going to go and fetch some stuff. Ah, there we go. Right. Okay. Now it's a bit fiddly because you can't actually move anything around. But there you go. So that's the range that they're going to go to to pick up stone blocks. Do you know what? That is absolutely fine. That is all okay. I am very, very happy with that. And then we want to do a similar thing with this here. We want to do a similar thing with the smelter because when they're melting, uh, smelting metal from the slag metal that we sometimes find, um, there might be some over here that's fallen from, you know, I don't know, cargo pods or something's crashed over here. And um, and yeah, they're wandering over here to pick it up. And yet there might be angry animals around or whatever. What is that very red looking thing? What is that? Oh, it's a dead, it's a dead rotting turkey. Mmm, delicious. Um, I did notice that just there. A dead timber. We will absolutely have that and turn that into some food. Uh, there is a dead wild boar. Well, that's, that's, do you know what? There's some dead animals around that we will gladly go and help ourselves to. If they are not rotting, of course. If they're rotting, uh, we ain't interested. But yeah, we'll gladly go and get some stuff. Uh, is there anything else? Of course, we need to pick up all this over here. There's some free stuff there. Oh, there's a dead alpaca. That's rotting. That's a bit of a shame. I assume they're being got by other things like uh, like this here. Maybe this warg is coming to <laughs> is coming to get people. I love the fact they're called wargs. I don't know how you say it. Is it warg? 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 I, I don't know. I don't know how you say it. I, I just like to overpronounce it just for comedic effect. Um. So yeah, there we go. So um. yeah, this, uh, what were we looking at? Uh, we were looking at the smelting thing. So we want to make sure that when they go and grab this metal, they're also doing it within a certain range. Yeah, so at the moment, the range is unlimited. So they're just going to go anywhere on the map. I would rather bring that into just our storage area. So I don't know, keep it within our walls. So just there. Is that within the walls and the storage area? Yes, it is. Okay, marvellous. Okay, so we'll keep that. Do you know what? That might be worth putting in the walls, actually, just to make sure they don't wander outside. I know it's fine. There we go. It is within the walls and it covers the storage area. Okay, right. That's two things I wanted to get done. That's quite useful. So we've got those things done. That'll stop people wandering about the place. Um, another thing that we want to do, because I want everybody to be wearing lovely flak pants, how about, can we have, this was suggested in the comments, do until you have two, but do not count equipped ones. Now, I do not know how we do that. So do until we have, so, I don't know, do until we have two but oh this is very confusing I, I just think we need 10 but then what happens is once somebody puts them on it then goes okay i won't count that so we're gonna have everybody wearing 10 pairs of flak pants eventually and then we'll have 10 more in storage so yes i see what's going on there ah count equipped uh yes is that what we want to do we don't want to count tainted so currently we have three out of 10 and that includes equipped ones. Ah, right, okay. So if we say 12, 12 flak pants, that means that everybody will have a pair to wear, and then there'll be two spare. And then if we then get rid of one, if some deteriorate or fall apart, or we burn them or whatever, and it goes down, then they'll make another couple of extra pairs. Okay, right, yeah, that's quite good. I like that. We will absolutely have that in. That is marvellous. Okay, right. Who do you want to go and get to do the talking to the trade people? Um, social of 12... Uh, oh, definitely not you. A social of one, that's quite terrible. Social of 12. Yeah, we have. We could do with somebody who really is super social. I think we've got 12 is the... 12 is the bio. 12 is the highest. Although we could get Ash to go and do it. Because Ash has a burning passion for this. And that might help increase it a bit. So yeah, let's go and do that, shall we? Let's get Ash to go and do it. So, right, call Ali Lubricants, please, Ash. Get out of your sick bed. Start feeling sorry for yourself. Come and do some work and then you can go back and be ill. Um, oh, <laughs> you negotiate your Ash. Cannot talk properly because of poor health. This will affect trade prices. Ash, back to bed with you. Right, okay, there we go. What's Ash got wrong with her that means she can't talk? She's got... Oh, oh, that's interesting. Right, she's got fibrous mechanites, which is a thing that she often has. She's got the penoxycycline which will stop her getting ill from some other things. Um, she is also high. She is high on psychite tea and she has flu. Okay, ah, maybe it's the flu. It's the flu because her nose is all bunged up and she can't talk. Right, Croc, you are just there. So how about 
you come down here and call Ali Lubricants. Hello, Ali Lubricants. What do you have for sale? You have many weapons. You have many, many weapons. Are you interested in anything else? Right, you're not interested in in selling the fabrics. Uh, yeah, you're not interested in buying the clothes either. That is a bit of a shame. Um, however, you will buy lots of our weapons, which is quite good. So we can get rid of, like, the steel knife. Awful. We don't need that. So let's go through and get rid of it. It's like a wooden club. We're never going to use a wooden club. A steel mace, a steel knife, steel knife. Um, we'll get rid of some poor quality steel knives. Another steel knife. Okay, so another steel mace, steel gladius. These are all poor quality things. So we can just get rid of these. Uh, plasteel knife. In fact, no, we'll keep that. It's plasteel. We'll keep that. Um, a poor revolver we'll get rid of. What else do you want to get rid of? Uh, an auto pistol. You'll get rid of the auto pistol. If we've got revolvers, we'll get rid of that. That's an excellent revolver. Uh, we've got some incendiary launchers. I'm, I'm just going to get rid of them. We'll just sell those. Uh, pump shotgun, I think we'll probably keep. I'm not, I'm not really into the incendiary launchers. I'm, I'm not very good at this game as it is. I think maybe having those is going to be more of a liability. So how about we get rid of that and we get rid of this poor quality LMG. I don't want frag grenades. Because I think they're just going to be, again, a liability. I will mess something up with those quite fantastically. So we can make 232 by selling a load of stuff. Um, you have nine components. I will absolutely buy nine components off you. Thank you very much. So again, we're going to lose 99, but we have a bit of money available, which is nice. We can make our own medicine. Ooh, these shells. Oh yeah, we can get rid of those. Oh my goodness. That makes 758. Yeah, I don't want them. I don't want those shells. And somebody pointed out in the comments that also they're explosive. So if something did happen, if there was a fire or whatever, and it reached those shells, they would explode. And that would be bad. So how about we accept that for now? Now I am noting down here there's like flak pants and things. There's some good flak pants down there. And marine helmets. 913, my goodness. But they must be very, very good for that much money. Yeah, I'm very tempted to just sort of spend a bit of the monies. Right, let's accept that for now. So let's make some money off them. Okay, so that's good. Right, and now we'll go here and we will reinstall this down here to see if they want to buy some lovely artwork. So we'll move that down. And if we can sell all of this art, so if they, if somebody moves it really soon, that would be grand. If we could just shuffle it around a little bit, that would be nice. Um, uh, have we built that thing yet? No, okay, right, I'm just making everybody too busy. We've all got too many things soon, but come on, the combat trader might leave soon. Can we move this, somebody? Who's around? Croc, you're, you're hauling the dead wolf. Oh, there, right, Croc, once you've hauled a dead wolf, once you've done that, uh, could you, uh, you're resting, well, well, you think you're going to do some resting, Croc, but really, really, how about, how about you do that moving around of things? Do the moving of the thing, um... And it's down. Right, okay. And now, Croc, I, I know you've just gone to bed. I know you've gone to bed. But we're going to go and call Ali Lubricants again. The combat supplier. So come back this way. Sort of yawn at them a little bit. <laughs> ah, this is what we're talking about. So all these things we can sell. And then we could buy some stuff. So there's a masterwork flak jacket there. We could buy that. I mean, we could make our own. But yeah, flak pants, I'm, I'm, I'll absolutely buy some of those. Um, and then charge rifles. Now, people have said these are really good. A good one as well. People in the comments have said these are good things. Right. Let's go. That, 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 that. Have all of our artwork, please. So... 2,546. So we're going to take pretty much all of their money off them from selling all of our sculptures. So then I think what we'll do is let's get ourselves a good marine helmet and then let's get ourselves their kind of rubbishy flak pants on there. Well, that flak vest. Do you know what? We'll sell the flak vest. It's fine. The flak vest can clear off. We can deal without that. That's fine. Um, so then how about we've got ourselves a charge rifle, a good quality one, a charged shot assault rifle, Pulse charge technology charges each shot with unstable energy. Now, we could begin to make some of those. So I think that's what we're researching. But whilst we've got this big pile of money here, why don't we just buy ourselves one? Let's treat ourselves to one. So we're selling all the statues, which is what they're there for. That's absolutely fine. And then we're going to buy ourselves a charge rifle and a marine helmet, which sounds useful. Um, all these other things up here, 
not so bothered about. I don't really want any of these things. We've got quite a good uh, mace. We've got a uh, uranium mace. We don't have anything there. So, yeah, do we want anything else? Poor, excellent. Yeah, you're, you're not the best. <laughs> you're not the best of combat suppliers. Poor, a poor thing there, a poor revolver, a poor incendiary launcher. I mean, that might have been ours that we possibly sold them. Okay, maybe they're the things that we sold them. Let's not buy them back. Um, do you know what? I think that'll do. I think that will do. So we will get ourselves, we'll treat ourselves to a marine helmet and a charge rifle, and we're going to make some money off them as well. So, um, yeah, okay. A pleasure doing business with you. Thank you very much. And now... Do we have those things in stock now? Um, I don't know where they would be. Like, what does the charge rifle look like? I do not know. Uh, where do they appear? I thought they would appear within the range of the beacon. Oh, they appeared down here, possibly. Oh, got to do some fixing of things. Starvation. That's generally bad. Colonel is starving. Uh, well, go, go and get something to eat, Colonel. Go and do some... Ah, ah. I queued Colonel up to do all that stuff, didn't I? And Colonel needs to eat some food. Okay, right. Put that stuff in there, Colonel. Colonel, I want you to go and eat some food, please. Consume a simple meal. And then go and do some normal stuff with your life. I don't, do not want you to starve to death. That would be a sad state of affairs. Yeah, go to bed. Someone will come out and sort all this out at some other point. I mean, it's steel. We could do, do with it being in. Because we could get this in. Ah, marvellous. Okay, do you know what? Build a copy and a copy. And I think think that will be it we will have our hydroponics room all sorted which is wonderful um we are out of kibble i notice we are very much out of kibble so we could do with getting some kibble in and where are our fancy ah there is that it the charge rifle is in and we should have a fancy helmet of some description although i do not know what it looks like or where it is I'd expect it to look quite futuristic -y. What was it? Like a marine helmet or something. Um, where Where is that exactly? Do you know, I am not sure where it is. I've gone through and checked. I don't think anybody is currently wearing the marine helmet that we ordered. So I don't think it's any of these things here either. These are just you know, normal hats. They're just lovely hats. So I don't know exactly where it is. That's not it. That's just a little sort of toque kind of cloth hat thing. So I don't know exactly where it is. Um, so there's the gun, there's the lovely rifle that we got, which we will give to somebody right now, but I do not know where the other thing is, unless you're moving it round. Is it being hauled, possibly? Is it being moved around right now? I do not know. I'm not entirely sure. Um, yeah, that might have to remain a bit of a mystery for a while. Don't know how we kind of find out where it would be, but okay, right, look, look, right, hang on. Let's just go through. Okay, right, the, the, the room is finished. The, the hydroponics room is done. So look, everybody, it is finished at long last. And Ali Lubricants has gone out of range. That is absolutely fine. We did what we needed to do with them. Lots of stuff here being seeded, which is lovely. So lots of rice is going to come through. We could do with getting some more rice because, um, uh, because we need to make some food for the animals. There's no real food for the animals. I mean, we could... We could harvest that and hope that that might do the job. Are there any more of those around? I think there's isn't there one up here somewhere. No, I completely made that up. Yay. Um, okay. Yeah, we'll grab that. That might be useful for a little bit of a little bit of food or something. I don't know. But there we go. Right. So they've got plenty of animals up there if we want to go and do some hunting. Although we do have 456 bear meat. I think that's quite a lot of meat right now. I don't think we necessarily need to rush into getting some more meat. Right, who do we want to have the big shooty gun? So Kunig. Kunig's got the sniper rifle. It's normal quality, but it's 98%. So we'll keep that. Kunig has got a bolt action rifle. Uh, Kunig, sorry, not Kunig. Colonel. Colonel's got this bolt action rifle. You do go out and do a lot of the fighting. And you're probably quite good at it. So bio, shooting 12. Shooting 11, shooting 7. Uh, ah, Hull has got the marine helmet. Hull is wearing the marine helmet because Hull has got a different picture of that. Hull has got all sorts of weird looking. Okay, you've got a marine helmet on. What does it do? What does it do exactly? It covers your head and your eyes and your ears and your nose and your jaw. And it gives you an awful lot of protection against lots of things. And it also insulates you a little bit and it's got lots of hit points. Okay, that's pretty good. 
That is, that's pretty good. It's going to deteriorate at 1.6. Oh, when it's left outside. I was going to say, hang on, what? why is it falling apart? What's it made of? But no, that's fine. Um, okay, Hull, you are wearing that. Do we want Hull to wear that? Possibly. Possibly, because Hull is our close combat person. So Hull will run at people with a uranium mace. So Hull needs to get in there. So if Hull has an extra bit of armour, then that's probably quite a good idea. Um, um, if that's wrong, I'm sure the comments people will tell me that that's probably not the best choice. But at the moment, I'm quite happy with that. Uh, right. So what are we looking at? We're looking at um, we're looking at shooting. When we right, you do not shoot. Ash is rubbish. Kathy is not brilliant either. Oh dear. Right. Okay. Let's give. Uh, Colonel is currently having. A, oh, oh, Colonel, you're drinking a cup of tea. I will not interrupt your tea drinking, Colonel. Right now, I'll interrupt it. Right. You go and equip the charge rifle. So this is very exciting. So yeah, you go and equip the good weapon. That's very exciting. And now the bolt action rifle or a pump shotgun. Now, which is the best out of these? Um, damage. Uh, damage. 18 for a pump shotgun with 14% armor penetration. Or we've got 18 damage for the bolt action rifle with 27. But the range of that is 37. And it takes a little while to warm up. Um, yeah, that's quicker, but the range is obviously less. I think let's give um, let's give uh, what's Beryl got? Beryl's got the assault rifle. So Max, Max has got this sort of little revolver. So how about we give Mags now the bolt action rifle? So that's pretty good. And then Ash can come through and have the pump shotgun. So let's sort of switch people's weapons around a little bit. And then Kathy has the pump shotgun. So we've got some half decent weapons going on now. So we've left all the little pistols and stuff behind. I mean, we could have sold all that, I suppose. We could have sold all those pistols. We don't really need those. But yeah, it's fine. Well, another trader will come by at some point, I'm pretty sure. Um, okay, right. So the combat supply has gone. It's a lovely summer's day. It's looking very nice. The hay grass is coming on quite nicely. That is very, very good. How's the Devil Strand doing? 22%. Down, oh, up to 31% sort of over here. So the earlier ones are doing all right. Um, what else is going on? I, I think we're sort of doing all right. How's the corn doing, actually? 39% grown or 43% grown in this corner. So that's looking pretty good as well. Um, yeah, we do need to make some kibble. Now, Colonel, where are you going? Are you making kibble? You're cooking a simple meal. I would rather, Colonel, you went and did that. I would rather you went and prepared some kibble for our animals, please. That would be excellent. If you could do that, because I don't want a little starvation thing coming up, because that would be bad. So yeah, you go and do that, and get up here and make some kibble. There we go. So at least we've got 50. Um, even if we get 100 from some of the rice we've got, that would be absolutely fine. So yeah, we'll just do that. We'll just chuck that on there. And marvellous. And how many meals have we got for our actual people? 63. Okay. That is looking pretty good. And then rice is coming through. Lots of rice. We'll have loads of corn soon. Oh, no. <laughs> no game. Don't do this to me now. Um, uh, okay, well, I was going to say, hopefully the hay grass will be growing. But is it going to grow? An unusual heat wave has begun. Heat waves can kill people uh, if they start getting heat stroke. Stay cool by building a cooler or getting deep under a mountain. Okay, what I, do, what I think we need to now do is... We can go to here, we can select all of our heaters, and and we can just turn them off. Let's turn the heaters off because it's going to get quite toasty. Everyone's just going to go and stand in the uh, stand in the freezers now. <laughs> it's just time to stand in the freezers, folks, because it's yet another RimWorld heat wave. Okay, right, we have an interesting thing happening here. So Hull is binging on Ambrosia. This happened because of the trait Chemical Interest. I didn't realise we had any ambrosia. Or is she going out and eating the raw ambrosia that is growing out of the ground? Because there's ambrosia over here, there's ambrosia bushes, they're only 54% grown. So we don't actually have any ambrosia. So I don't know where you're going to get this hull. I mean, let's jump to your location. Shall we watch you and see where you're going to get this stuff? Because I'm pretty confident we do not have any. We don't have any. I mean, it's growing. We've got two areas where it is growing, but we do not have any right now. So you're going to be a little bit disappointed because you're going to go and try and binge on something. And then and then you're going to be very, very sad because there isn't anything for you to binge on. Um, OK, fine. So you can you can carry on doing that hole. You enjoy. Uh, yeah, you're wandering through here. Right. So you, you're getting yourself just a regular meal. 
It was just getting yourself a meal. It is 36 degrees C indoors at 10 in the morning. Oh my goodness me. Wow. Oh my goodness me. Even this room, even here, even the, the, the cool room is 5 degrees C. Oh, oh, okay, right. Do we need to turn these up a little bit? The target temperature is minus 10. Do I mean, do we need to turn these up? I mean, I've double walled the outside and everything. I'm amazed that it's gone up to that temperature. You know, yeah, all that stuff will start going off. I mean, yeah, it's going to spoil in a few days. How's the meat looking? Four days, 3.3 days, 3.9 days. Uh, it would, the heat wave would come along when we've got a massive pile of meat, wouldn't it? Of course it would. <laughs> what else would happen? Um, okay. Right. Uh, what we'll do is we'll move time on. Hopefully Hull will stop being a weirdo and trying to binge on something that isn't here. And then hopefully the heat wave will go away sooner rather than later. I mean, I know that's very ambitious because this is RimWorld and RimWorld is here to just bully us, essentially. It bullies us and it victimises us and it makes us think everything is fine and then it makes everything go wrong. But hopefully the heat wave will go away. Oh my goodness me. It is 12 degrees C in here. Ah, oh, this is supposed to be the nice cool room. It's 44 degrees C. Oh my goodness me. 47 in the hospital. Poor Ash. Poor Ash is just sitting there <laughs> just sweating. Oh, oh dear. You're in serious pain and you're sick. You've slept in the heat. Uh, you've stuck indoors. Your sleep has been disturbed. You're having a terrible time, Ash. You're not having the best of times. Also, you've picked the bed where you can't watch the TV, you fool. What's wrong with you? Okay, so a couple of things. Number one, Wee Hours is at a risk of having a minor breakdown. Okay, we'll have to measure that. Now, currently, they are hauling something. They're hauling pemmican from over here back to our base. Now, yes, this came down in a cargo pod, did it? I can't remember, but it crashed last time. So we've gone to grab this pemmican stuff and hopefully the animals can eat that. That would be quite nice. Just give it to the animals. That will be fine. In fact, that's where it's going. It's going into there for the animals. So that's quite good. So you're doing that. But also, Ambi has now developed cirrhosis. This is caused by alcohol tolerance large and uh, yeah ambi was the was the chicken so ambi's one of our chickens and um ambi did uh partake of some of the alcohol ambi was a little bit drunk at one point <laughs> so um, so uh, so yeah i mean it, okay oh, she wasn't a little bit drunk she was a lot drunk it was a little bit touch and go as to whether ambi would survive so ambi is is okay now but i imagine that's quite bad so you've got liver cirrhosis so yeah, that's probably not going to... Well, that's not going to be too good for you. You're in... Oh no, you've got alcohol tolerance oh, large. Oh, okay, yes. Yeah, so you've got heat stroke. Oh, oh, that's quite bad. You've got heat stroke. Um, yeah, have all the chickens got heat stroke? Initial stages of heat stroke. Uh, okay, right. I mean, the other thing is, do we bring... I mean, the barn is 50 degrees C. I mean, do we bring the chickens inside? It seems very pointless to bring the chickens inside. How are all the other animals? You've got initial stage heat stroke. Uh, you you have not. Okay. You really haven't got anything wrong with you at all, Poison Stinger. You're absolutely fine. Is everyone else all right? Initial stages of heat stroke. Okay. Um, I mean, I notice everyone is wearing hats. I mean, do we want to take our hats off and our big coats? I mean, do you? is that something that we might want to do? I do not know. I'm not entirely sure. This this is where I get very confused with this kind of stuff. I mean, no corpse wear. Yeah, I get that. No corpse wear is fine. I mean, but do we want to have some sort of extra thing here for heat wave wear, where we just wear, I don't know, something that's really cool, like a duster, although we don't have any of those. We, we don't go around wearing hats. We don't wear any headgear, because that's surely going to make them quite warm. <laughs> so maybe... Maybe I need to create a new one of these and have it so they don't wear headgear and they don't wear, I don't know, like jackets. Surely a jacket is going to make you warm in this weather. It's going to make you boiling hot. Um, so I'm just thinking we do this. We just have a special thing. We copy this and just say, don't have any headgear on. Because these are all wearing like cloth hats. You don't need cloth hats, folks. It's boiling hot. Use your initiative and take them off. So right, what we'll do is we'll create a new thing, uh, not Outfit 8. Uh, we'll call it, we'll call it, uh, uh, feeling, feeling hot, hot, hot. There we go. Feeling hot, hot, hot. That'll do. None of that and no headgear. Okay, so we'll have that for everybody. You can wear other stuff. Well, let's have no tribal wear because that just seems a bit silly. Um, and we'll leave everything else like that. 
But even if we get to take their get them to take their hats off, that might make a little bit of a difference. So okay, right. So feeling hot, hot, hot. Here we go. So we'll just do that. Anything worker, soldier, nudist. We've got all these other things in already. Okay, yes, warm weather combat outfit was something that we were looking at last time. We never got round to. Uh, but okay, right. So there you go. Feeling hot, hot, hot. People should go and take off their hats then, by all accounts. They should go and actually... Yeah, look, they've all taken off their hats. Oh my goodness. I don't think we've seen some of them without their hats on before. Like Beryl. Beryl's wearing a hat all the time. Beryl isn't wearing a hat. We ours has got bunches. <laughs> we ours has got bunches. Oh, this this is a revelation. Kathy has got red hair. Oh, wow. This is very exciting. Yeah, I don't think we've seen some of them without hats on. I think we ours has always worn a hat. So there we go. That, that's quite interesting. I hadn't realised that. There we go. Right. Everyone take your hats off. You can all come and put them back on later. Hull is no longer binging on Ambrosia. That's very useful. Colonel is doing some late night research. You've got the initial stages of heat stroke. It will be good if this heat wave would just go away. That would be marvellous. Okay, I'm a little bit confused. What's going on here? So Max Master, I just thought I'd check on him because he was sleeping outside in a heat wave. And I thought, oh dear, that's probably quite bad. But he hasn't got any heat stroke. But he does have Ambrosia Warmth and Ambrosia Tolerance. But I don't think we have any Ambrosia in here. I'm really confused as to what the Ambrosia is. I thought the Ambrosia was this stuff up here. And that is an Ambrosia bush. But we've got... None of that's grown yet. So how is he eating or consuming or drinking or whatever Ambrosia when we haven't actually got any? Unless we've got some and it goes by another name or something. I don't know. That's not it. That's nutrient paste. That is hops. That is cycloid leaves. So we can't be eating any of those. Is it growing in just in this area? And I've not noticed. Is it spread into this place? And we're just, I've just not seen where it is. I don't think so. I don't think it's sort of within our home zone or whatever. So I'm a little bit confused as to how that is a thing. I do not know how that's happening. Um, yeah, okay. Well, comment section, assemble. <laughs> Let me know what's going on there. We'll harvest that. Because I don't know how we can have ambrosia tolerance and have ambrosia warmth when we haven't got any of it. So, uh, yes, if someone would like to explain that to me, that would be lovely. Okay, what I think we'll do now is I think we will get rid of some of the poor clothing. So this thing here, this is a plain leather t-shirt. It is poor quality. We don't really want poor quality stuff around. If there's really good stuff, we'll keep it and maybe sell it. If there's even sort of normal stuff, we'll keep it just, you know, in a, in a sort of in a pinch. But anything that's poor, I don't really want. So although I can't really see that much poor stuff. Everything looks like there's some poor, there's some poor camel hide pants up there. So, right, I think we go down to here. We go down to the crematorium. The lovely, lovely, cool crematorium. I do not envy the person that's going to have to do this in 48 degrees C of heat. But here we go. So, well, that will have some bills in it. Uh, we get cremate corpse. We can also get burn apparel. So, let's do that. Um, and we want to do forever. And then we can say, um, uh, yeah, we'll burn tainted stuff. So we can burn tainted clothes. Oh, hang on a minute. No, we might want clean. And that. So, but only if, only if it is uh, poor. So if it's poor, if it's awful to poor, burn it. Anything that is awful to poor, set on fire. All of these things, except those things there, which it seems determined not to do. Also, maybe plate armor we don't want to do. Marine armor, maybe we won't set fire to that. Um... Other things we might not want to set fire to and obliterate. Uh, anything that sounds expensive that we might be able to sell. Like marine helmets. They were quite expensive. Advanced helmets. They're probably expensive. We could probably do with selling them on. But button-down shirts. Yeah, we'll get rid of them. We'll get rid of dusters. We'll get rid of flak jackets, flak pants. So this is just poor stuff. I'm not bothered about hit points. Uh, if it's awful to poor, we will set it on fire. So, okay. And then bring the radius to about... 38 or something that probably is fine so okay so we'll do that hopefully that will just rid us of a few things not loads of things so that there is normal quality they will not set fire to that okay that's fine right okay good uh okay how is everything doing everything is everything is incredibly hot it's 57 degrees c outside 57 degrees C. That is just very ludicrous indeed. How are people dealing with it? Minor heat stroke. 
So people are moving a bit slower and they are 10% less conscious. So I guess that affects their ability to do simple things because they're also <laughs> drifting in and out of consciousness a little bit. Oh dear. Um, how's that room looking? That room is 16 degrees C. Uh, what's happening to our 367 meat? It's going off very soon. Hmm. Okay, right, right, okay. Here is a plan. Here is a plan. Cook simple meal. At the moment, we are just using, uh, we're using, we're not using meat to make simple meals. This meat's going to go off. It will be wasted. I think what we'll do is we'll suspend that for now and we will go add a bill, cook a simple meal, push that up. So say yes, yes, and yes. And we'll put it above the psychite T. Put do until we, in fact, do, yeah, do until we have, um, uh, hang on, bring bring that down. No, hang on, no, bring it up, bring it up. Can I, can I click on a button? Yeah, there we go. Do until we have a hundred simple meals, but just use meat. Just use the meat that we have. So don't use insect meat and don't use human meat because that's just a bit weird, but we've got loads of bear meat and loads of alpaca meat. So please just use any meat we have in order to make this work. So yeah, and, and just, just cook. Just go forth and cook, because otherwise that food is going to be wasted. And there's no point in that. We don't want to waste any of that stuff. Also, I see we just chuck some stuff into the creme. Yeah, okay. I think that was some poor quality stuff that got thrown into the creme. So that's pretty good. We're storing some more stuff up there. Okay, right. And we are making some food out of the meat. So we're trying to do as best we can, because this meat is going off soon. So we just need to get on with that. Yes, eat, eat quicker, Colonel. Eat quicker. Because, yeah, the room, it just can't keep itself cold enough. How warm is that room? That that room is minus 5 degrees C. Why is that room colder than that room? This room is 21 degrees C. And that room is minus 8. Why is that room somehow cooler than this room? Size, possibly? Is it the size of the room? Because that's got that's got two cooler things in it just like that one has. I assume it's the size of the room. It, the, the two coolers cannot actually make that work. They can't do it. This is excellent though, look. Ash is just absolutely just churning out some things. Bandit camp quest. Um, right, hang on then, let's have a look. Uh, we'll send us a reward. Three enemies, plastil, yeah, whatever. Okay, fine. I, I really want the heat wave to just go away. I just want the heat wave to not be here anymore. 12 hours until all this stuff goes off. Uh, right, okay, Ash, you were probably going to bed, but Ash, no, go and do cooking. We want to get as much food as we can, so as much stuff as we can. Yeah, so look, there's 60 at the minute, so we've got 60 meals. So if we can get that up to 70, that would be great. And then this will all go off. All this meat will go off, which will be very, very sad. But yeah, look, we're just, we're just getting so many of them. We're just piling up loads and loads of food. So yeah, we're on 60. What are we on? 65. And that's with people coming and taking them as well. Uh, that's a fire. That's a bit of a fire right there. All the batteries have discharged and there's a fire and there's a heat wave. Oh, I'd love to go and fight a fire in a heat wave. That would be the funnest of all the things. Right. Um, can people get up and do that? We Hours is wandering. So We Hours, can you... Can you go and extinguish a fire? Because that would be helpful. Croc, you're awake. You're praying. Well, Croc, go and extinguish a fire and then continue your prayers. That would be marvellous. Kathy is resting with your pump shotgun. You can also... Oh, that's reserved by Hull. Uh, you can go and put out a fire as well. I'm sure that'll be fine. Please do not destroy our geothermal generator. Because that will be bad. Okay, so yeah, zzz, yes, all the batteries are empty and all that kind of stuff. I've gotcha. Right, everyone go and put out the fires. Put out the blaze. Right, well done. And they're repairing things, which is very, very handy in the, in the morning. <laughs> it's like five in the morning, just doing some repairs, folks. Right, seven hours. Ah, we're going to get to use all of the meat. Six hours. Yeah, I think we might. I think we. that's probably a pretty good thing we did there. Yay. Right, okay. So we've got ourselves. Have we got any kibble? Uh, we've got some pemmican that the animals can have. Um, and also, are they on this? Uh, they might be eating the hay grass as well, which is quite nice. It looks like it's being re-sown. So I assume the animals are eating it. Now it's fully grown. I guess the animals are eating it. So that's pretty good. 
And then we, ju we just need this heat wave to just stop. The heat wave is just causing us all sorts of trouble. People have got heat stroke and everything. Cunic, how are you? You've got minor heat stroke and you're high on tea. Well, isn't that wonderful? Well done, Cunic. <laughs> Good for you. And we have finished the research on pulse charged munitions. Okay, right, pause time. So what do we want to do now? Now, a few people um, have said I shouldn't go to Starflight Basics because that is not required right now. There is still plenty of other stuff for us to do. I mean, we do need this crypto sleep casket thing anyway in order to get this thing. So there's prerequisites for when we eventually get round to building a spaceship. That's a little way off, I think. I think getting a spaceship is still slightly far away. Um, the powered armor. People have said you want to get powered armor because it's really, really good. So build powered armor and power armor helmets. The only thing is, it's going to take 6,000 research. That's that's quite a lot of research right there. That is an awful lot of research. So um, so yeah, we might, we might need to do that sooner rather than later. If that's in, then that's brilliant. Is there anything else down here we want? Cocoa is for chocolate valuable on the market and maybe we want to start growing cocoa i don't really think we need to do that all this stuff is drugs um penoxycycline um hang on hang on do we need to start making that it's only 500 research points how much have we got we've got 18 of it left we've got 18 of it we have got some ambrosia we have got some ambrosia just there oh it's just there well how have we acquired that unless some of this has become become sort of ripe or ready or whatever it is. But yeah, everything else is like 57 and 56. So how on earth have we acquired some ambrosia? I don't know how we've done that or where it is. It's there. It's this stuff. Um, okay. It's all a bit weird. Okay, right, fine. Um, but that clean stuff, we will run out of that eventually. But we do have a little bit, so I don't think we need that right now. Uh, long blades, uh, yeah, long swords and spears. All this stuff down here we don't need. We're past all that now. I mean, it, it, it sort of rankles me a bit. I like getting stuff all complete. I like to fill everything up. So, yeah, it's annoying that we've got to leave those behind. Mortars, not so bothered. Biofuel, not so fussed. Watermill generators, we're not on a river, so we can't use that. IEDs might be quite fun. Improvised traps from any kind of mortar shell. Now we just sell our mortar shells, but we could make some IEDs and put them around the edge of the base and people can tread on them and they explode. Um, but again, not too bothered about those. It's more about this stuff down here now. Auto cannon turrets sound very exciting. I do like the sound of those. And uh, yeah, at some point we are going to come under attack from lots of people. And yeah, some turrets might be quite a useful thing. Uh, coloured lights, yay! Coloured lights for no point at all. Uh, moisture pump, not too bothered. Transport pods, yeah, again, not too fussed about that. Multi-barrel weapons is for miniguns, not bothered about that. I think we're just going to go for, it's either the powered armour or the vitals monitor. Uh, that improves medical outcomes when placed next to hospital beds. Which one do you want to get first? I think maybe we'll get powered armor first. So get that in and then maybe get the vitals monitor afterwards. So let's research this thing. It's going to take absolutely ages to get that stuff done. I don't know how long it's going to take us to get 6,000 research points. It's probably going to take a heck of a long time. I would imagine many, many months. So there we go. We're on three out of 6,000. So yay. <laughs> so yeah, progress has started. We're learning about powered armor. It's going to take us a little while to get there, but Joe, we'll get there in the end, I'm sure. Now, that's interesting. This is interesting. This is Ms. Awesome J. This is our female cow, and, and she is inside. So she is indoors right now, wandering about in our workshop. Now, I don't know why she's wandering around in the workshop, but she is. But if I look down here, Ms. Awesome J is, is here. She's in the allowed area of where the muffalo roam. So how come the cow has broken free of this zone and he's going somewhere else. What's happening there? The only thing I can think of is that they're, they're coming to try and cool down because this room is 15 degrees C. So is everyone just sort of coming in here to just have a little chill out? Also, let's switch back on the cook simple meals using the vegetarian stuff because that's all we've got now. I think we should be all right. We've got 56 meals and we are growing a heck of a lot of rice up there. So we should be okay. And I think the animals are eating the hay grass. I think they have gone through and nibbled on the hay grass. Either that or it's just dying in the heat. I do not know. But um, but yes, I think the animals will be okay. The animals will be okay. And then there's some pemmican. We could give them some pemmican to eat. I don't know if we want them to eat the pemmican. I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, they've look, they've got they've got some food. Oh hang on, what's we hours doing? 
You're feeding. You're you're feeding it to. Oh, you're feeding it to you. You're feeding it to Amby, who is in pain shock. Oh, that's that's nice. Well done, wee hours. You're a doctor of, of people and animals. And the temperature outside is coming back down to normal level. So it's currently, what, about 10 in the morning and it's 25 degrees C. And the heat wave is over. Oh, happy days, right? Everyone can get back to normal. But yeah, there we go. So this room, look, the uh, the main sort of food storage area is already back down to minus four, minus five. Right, how's everyone feeling? Ash, how hot are these rooms? How hot are these rooms now? Because they're going to start, they're going to keep the heat, aren't they? Yeah, so 33 degrees C. But Ash, how are you? You have, uh, you do not have any heat stroke at all. Kunig, do you have any? Oh, is heat, does heat stroke just go the instant it's not that hot? Oh no, you've got initial stage of heat stroke. So, okay, so some people are more affected than others, but that's fine. Okay, so that's something we will have to sort of deal with. But I think everybody's okay. I guess if they do feel ill, they would check themselves into the hospital and we would deal with them. So, okay, right, that is wonderful. Right, let's keep everything going there. So the corn plant is only up to 51% grown. That's not grown very much at all. That must have been stunted a little bit because of the heat. Okay, fine, there we go. That's what we've got to deal with. So, um, yeah, plenty of uh, plenty of stuff going on. It'd be lovely if we could get that rare thrombos. A small herd of them. Uh, that is not a herd, that's just one. That is just one thrombo. It is not a herd of them. But okay, that's fine. Right, it's going to have a little wonder about I'm not bothered. I'm not bothered by that right now. Somebody had unhappy nudity for a second there. Just go and go and take your clothes and take the clothes and get changed in your room and then come back out again. You don't have to get changed in this room just here. That's your own weird fault for choosing to do that, you strange people. Ah, now, a number of our animals are pregnant. Spikel is pregnant. Lots of other animals seem to be pregnant. Now, we do have a bit of an issue. This is too many animals, really. I mean, it's an okay amount. We've got one animal uh, for every... Uh, we've got two animals for every one human, I believe, and maybe a little bit extra. We've got that and change. Um, so some of them are pregnant. Now, does that mean pregnant? Yeah, so Spikel is pregnant, and Paloma is pregnant, and... Sibob is pregnant, and Poison Sting is pregnant, and Chunky Loki is pregnant. So we're going to have, potentially, one, two, three, four, five more animals. That is five more things to feed. And I think what we need to do, for the sake of the game and for the sake of sanity, I think we need to just get rid of those animals. Those animals will go. Now, I know we've been naming them, and I know we've been asking for people to join in the RimWorld fun, and, you know, we give, you the, give the names to the animals of people that requested to be in RimWorld, but... To have this, that, that's just too many. That is too many extra animals. So what we'll do is, particularly with the Yorkshire Terriers, because they don't do anything. The Yorkshire Terriers do not do anything at all. They wander around and they probably look lovely and people can kind of go up to them and go, oh, little Yorkshire Terrier. Oh, little Max Master. But they don't do anything. They don't haul. They don't fight. They don't do anything at all. Um, I mean, these things here, at least the Labradors do actually go and do something. The Labradors can fight and they can haul and do all that kind of stuff. Um, and the camels, we've got plenty of camels. So it might be the case that we have three extra camels to sell as well. So um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking we might have to possibly get rid of those animals. A freak localised flash storm is striking a small area with lightning. This can cause massive fires. Okay, where is the area? Oh, it's... It's up here. It's up here. Oh, marvellous. It's right next to us. That is a heck of a lot of lightning. Oh, it's a lot of lightning going on. The flash storm is over. Um, yeah, there's quite a lot of fire happening just there. There's a lot of fire going on. Now, hopefully some of that will burn out. These top ones will just burn out and go away. This one will hopefully go away. But there are plenty of trees around for it to spread to. So yeah, I'm a little bit concerned about some of those, some of these fires. That I don't think will reach us. I don't think that will get down to us. I mean, yeah, it's fairly sparse around there in terms of woods, you know, sort of trees and things to burn. But yeah, the top stuff is fine. We'll just leave that. We don't, I don't want to put our people at risk putting out a forest fire because that's silly. They're not trained firefighters. But yeah, I'm a bit concerned this might come down to us. In which case, if it does, they will have to go out and deal with it. But okay, right, we'll leave it for now. And just see what happens with the flames. And there is a solar flare, so the intense radiation has shut down all the electrical devices. Well, isn't that just wonderful? Now, how cool is this room just here? That room is now 6 degrees, and that room is 14 degrees C. Rimworld, what are you doing to me? Please stop it. it it's really warm outside. Stop messing with the heat levels. 
Oh, and the solar flare is ending already. Oh, that was very, very quick. That was a very short-lived solar flare. Okay, right, that's fine. So this room is now cooling down again, hopefully. Once everything gets back in, yeah, the temperature's coming back down. Nine degrees, eight degrees. Okay, lovely. That room is already nice and cold. I assume it's the temperature. I assume it's the temperature, which does make me think maybe when it's winter, not now, because I have to knock a hole in the wall and that will be bad, but when it's winter, maybe we will put another cooler in. In fact, we could put two coolers in. Because I didn't like the fact that it all went wrong in that room when there was a heat wave. It got too hot even for that. Ms. Awesome J is pregnant. Hooray! Right, okay, some more animals to sell. Animal starvation. Michael the Yorkshire... T Michael the dog is starving. Um, okay, yeah, we, we can't keep all these animals. It's becoming a little bit ridiculous. <laughs> the animals are just becoming a big old burden on us. Yeah, we, we can't keep the animals. We're going to have to do something about the massive pile of animals we've got however right now we do have the issue that michael the dog is starving and if there's one animal that we need to keep alive for this run it is michael the dog because he's been here from the beginning he is uh he's the he's the original animal that we had so yeah we need to keep him alive so michael um how about uh oh yeah we haven't got any veg that's the only thing oh, oh no meat hang on have we got veg or meat no, we've got we've got none of that stuff. We could do with this corn growing quite quickly. Um, okay, so we've got none of that. How about, can we go and do some hunting? The bear just lying down there in the middle of this charred forest. <laughs> I mean, it's probably not the best place to have a little sleep. I guess it'll do. Um, okay, ah, down there, there's a turkey. Let's hunt that turkey. So we'll go and kill that. We'll go and grab some stuff off of there. Uh, is there another bush? Do we have another bush around somewhere that we can go and get some, some berries off? Um, okay, so we'll get some berries from that bush. We'll go and hunt a turkey. That'll do the job for now. And then hopefully that'll give us at least something to make some, um, to make some kibble for Michael the dog to eat. Because that's what Michael is going to need to eat. Yeah, food, you're, you are very much loving. In fact, Michael, do you know what? Do you know what? For now, Michael, because you're Michael, you can go into the home zone, which means you can go into here and you can have a proper meal. You can have one of our prepared meals, Michael. Don't say I don't spoil you. And it is raining, which means that the fires up here are being put out. So that's quite good. There we go. So all those fires have now been dealt with thanks to nature. So nature started the fires. Nature's going to put out the fires, hopefully. Particularly resilient bits of flames just there. But there we go. Right, so they're gone. I mean, that has caused quite a bit of devastation up there. That has left that very barren indeed. Lots of dead trees, burned trees, there's not any vegetation. Yeah, that, that does not look good, does it? That <laughs> It looks like Fallout. There we go, we've recreated Fallout in RimWorld. So there we go, so that's now dealt with. So we don't have to worry about that. Um, has Michael sorted out his food woes? Michael, have you eaten food? Yes, you have. Right, you've had something to eat. Okay, right, this is all good. I'm glad you've eaten some food, Michael. Um, you're going to go out and... Did we did we kill the turkey? There is some turkey meat just there. There's 48 turkey meat. Crikey, that, that's that's quite a good amount of meat from a turkey. Um, are we going to... Oh, there's a raid. There's a raid. A group of pirates from the demon vampires have arrived nearby. It looks like they want to use sappers to tunnel around your defences. Oh, marvellous. Oh, there's a lot of them. One, two, three. These guys have got amazing hair. I mean, you might be here to kill us, but that is amazing hair. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Is that right? One, four, five, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, there's eleven of them. Oh, crikeys. Okay, right. Eleven people are going to come and raid us and... It seems they're going to use sappers, which means, as far as I'm aware, they kind of go under the ground and then come back again. They come back underneath our defences. So the trap corridor is currently out. Right, okay. Hold that open. Now, I don't know if this is going to make any difference at all, but we need to hold that open. So they might come through here if they're silly. But I think what they're going to do is they're going to appear somewhere, I don't know, in the grounds, in the base. I do not know. But do you know what? We will deal with all this next time out because I think I think this video, if we deal with this raid as well, it might be a bit too long. It might be quite a long video. So I think what we'll do is we shall finish up for now and next time out we will be dealing with this. The first thing that we're going to be dealing with is a raid by these people. And oh my goodness me, will we survive that? 
I, 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 I think we'll be okay. I think we'll be able to take them down, but we might well take some casualties. And of course, people are not wearing any helmets. Well, of course they're not. Of course they'd attack while I'm not prepared. So yeah, we need to actually get them with their helmets back on. In fact, you know what? Joe, you know what? Let's let's do that now. Not hot, hot, hot. Um, no corpse wear, please, for everybody. So go and put hats back on. Go and put on some hats um, because that will be quite useful. Yeah, you know, like you know, helmets and stuff. That will be really, really handy. So yeah, go and do that. So hopefully everyone can go and get at least some headgear on to keep themselves alive a little bit longer. And um, and then, yeah, then we'll see what we do with this. Of course, we've got the fancy weapons. Everyone's had a little bit of a weapon change. We've got that pulse rifle thingamajig. The only thing I don't know is where they're going to go. I don't know how this works. So they might stand here and then, I don't know, use sappers to tunnel under the walls and appear just here or just here. Or do they appear in the base? They come up in your, in your actual rooms. I do not know. But you know what? We will find out next time because, yes, we shall indeed finish things up for now on a bit of a lovely, lovely, exciting cliffhanger. Hopefully you are still enjoying this. If you are, then please do leave a like. And also, if you're not already, then please do subscribe to keep up to date with how we get on here in RimWorld. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard and I will see you next time. This is going to end badly. This is going to end badly, I suspect. <laughs> My God, it's Pengu. So uh, yeah, I don't, I don't have to put the engine bit. I feel that might be a problem in making a car. <laughs> I've broken the windscreen. <laughs> it's, en it's ending badly. It's ending very badly indeed. I might crash into a tree. How do I do any of the stuff with this car?